Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Brian, and this is my very dirty car. It's a 2007 Nissan Sentra SER. 2.5 liter four cylinder, making 177 horsepower and 172 foot-pounds of torque. First thing I want to get to here is the looks because it's probably a little controversial or has mixed opinions from a lot of people. And I actually really like the looks. It's a little bubbly, it's a little bit different, but I'm a really big fan of the lipstick on a pig type of look, which is when you have a really ugly base car like the regular Nissan Sentra, and you do a lot to it. You put ground effects on it, nice wheels, put a nice color on it, and it looks really good. So I, I like the looks, um, a lot of people might not, but let's hop inside and see the interior of this car. So for the interior of this car, it's, it's good and bad for personal taste preferences. It, it's really your own personal taste, the good. I love the layout of everything, of the buttons. The buttons are big, they're where they need to be. You have a huge volume knob. Everything's where it's supposed to be. I think it looks great, it looks clean, it looks classy, it doesn't look too um, congested, I guess you would say. Steering wheel looks nice, feels nice. Paddle shifters are in a nice place. You have steering wheel controls for cruise control only, not for audio, but that's okay. Um, I like the layout of the dash, I like the tachometer, I like how it all looks. Now, the bad. I think Nissan literally had no idea what a soft touch material was when they created this car because there is nothing. And I mean, rock hard everywhere you look, everywhere you touch, rock hard. And the dash, rock hard, everything. And the worst part about this is I wouldn't have that big of a qualm about it if it was more of center console, center stack because, you know, hard plastics, I can deal with them there. What I, I hate when people use bad materials for where you touch almost the entire car ride. So my right elbow touches the center stack, center, you know, thing right here, and it is hard, not soft at all. I mean, what's the point? I mean, your elbow, my elbow is resting there almost the entire car ride when I'm driving. And then left, my left arm is always resting here on this door, same thing. I mean, it is, it, it's like a plastic that has a tad bit of give, just a little bit of give, but still very hard. So not a fan of that. Comes to the back seats. Um, back seats actually have a good amount of room for being compact car. Trunk's good too. I fit three golf bags in there if that you know helps you evaluate how big the trunk is. Front seats, um, loose. They're not, they say SER and they're different than the regular Sentra, but they're a little loose for my liking. Um, they don't hold you in that tight. The bolsters aren't that kind of far out or tall to hold you in. Bolstering's not that great, a little bit loose. I like them a little bit tighter, a little bit snugger. Um, but they are comfortable for long distance driving. I've driven five plus hours in this car um, on road trips and I don't get fatigued. So they're comfortable for that. But, you know, I would like them to be a little bit tighter. And everything else, you know, it's good. So I, the looks, I really like the looks. Oh, and I forgot, I can't forget this. These, you probably see these in the camera right here, these two pod clusters. And there's two little pods in the cluster. And, and one is oil pressure and one is G-forces generated. And that is, I don't know if it's vertical how you say it, but it's accelerating G-forces, not lateral, so not turning. And it is, these two things are basically the stupidest things I've ever seen. I don't know what the point is of them. I never ever look at them. G-force gauge, who cares? You're not pulling much Gs in a 177 horsepower car. And same with oil pressure. I mean, I guess when my engine's really cold and it's cold outside, you can see the oil pressure is extremely high. So I guess a little reminder of not to, you know, take your car to red line when it's freezing cold, but that's about it. Um, isn't much else to it, so those are pretty dumb. But overall, it's a good layout. Um, I, this does have the Harman, the Roxford Fosgate um, audio upgrade, which is nice. It sounds pretty good. It's very bassy. Um, sounds good, but not exceptional. I've heard, you know, Bose systems and cars before, but it's good. It, it gets jobs done, and you have an aux, you have an aux cable for uh, your phone and everything. So interior, I like it. Materials absolutely suck but the looks and the feel and the function and, and how it is it, it's, it's very good for, from that standpoint Okay, so now to the fun part, and what everybody wants to know, is how does this thing drive? And so let's start with the power. We've got 177 horsepower, 172 foot-pounds of torque. And it's not bad. I mean, it feels pretty good. 
Um, heavy car, 3,300 pounds around, I believe. So that kind of sucks. You wish this would be closer, almost like 3,000 pounds, so you feel the power more, but very heavy car. Um, acceleration is decent. It's it's definitely enough. It's it's this car is very go kart like. If you know what I'm saying. So acceleration there, it's pretty good. I mean, it, it's definitely enough, but you definitely are want more. You're you're yearning for more a lot of the time. Um, weight handles very bad. It this has the base Sentra suspension. So if you go buy a 16 grand base Sentra, same suspension. So this thing has a lot of body roll in the corners and you really do feel it. So you would like better seats to hold you in. But, so body roll, not good. So that is where the Spec V comes in. So the Spec V, which has 200 horsepower and I think around 180 foot-pounds of torque, six-speed manual, which is much better, has an upgraded suspension. So I haven't driven it, but I'm assuming it's way flatter in the corners and it's a lot less body roll and feels much better. Power be nice, and it also weighs, I think, around 50 to almost 70 pounds, maybe lighter, because it's got a traditional six speed and not a CVT, which adds, um, adds weight, of course. Now, when it comes to the CVT, I know this is going to be an extremely unpopular opinion, but I would say don't knock it till you try it. A CVT with paddle shifters, now that's the asterisk there, is with paddle shifters, is pretty good because I've driven a lot of paddle shift cars and with automatics and traditional automatics, and when you shift that gear, there is a good delay before you get into that next gear and you could feel the whole car waiting and delaying and you're waiting for the transmission to catch up to you. And in this, since there, you never ever lose power to the ground because you're in a CVT and there's no shifting, it's just one big belt, the shifting in this car is instantaneous. I mean, I've never driven a dual clutch, but I feel like this is what a dual clutch would feel like. I mean, it's downshifts, upshifts, instant, every time. So I really, really, like CVT paddle shifters if you have to get it. Obviously, I would prefer a six-speed, and the reason I think a six-speed is for another video, but I definitely prefer would prefer a six-speed in this. However, I the CVT with paddles is great, so I won't knock it. So this car, when it comes to gripping, is also very poor for the fact that it's not that powerful, yet if you kind of floor it off the line in first gear, you will get wheel spin, which sucks. It is front-wheel drive, and that's not good, especially you know, with how little power you have, where you have a Focus ST or other front wheel drive cars who actually can put some power down and not, and when you're wheel spinning as much as them, that's, that's not good. And I, this doesn't have any limited slip in the front, it's just open, just like a traditional diff. So you're not gonna really, you know, have something up there helping you put the power down, which is unfortunate. But, but it, it's, it's still fun, and I, I felt that the best way, because I'm not a big speed person, I, I don't have to go fast, but I love accelerating fast. I love getting pushed back in your seat as much as you really can. So, when it comes to that, I, I, I really, you really need to find the way to do it, like the sweet spot of doing it, because when you accelerate from a standstill, you don't feel that acceleration, that push back in the seat thing as much as you really want to. So the best way to do it is almost put it in first gear and let yourself get down to about 15 miles an hour. And from there, you're at about 2,500 RPMs, which is where the sweet spot of the power band really starts, all the way up to about 5,000 RPMs and falls off after that. So if you let yourself decelerate in first gear about to about 15 miles per hour, and then, and then you floor from there, you do get that nice pushback sensation, the pushback feel that you really want. So that's a good way, I guess, to drive it. And, and the good thing about having the paddle shifters is you can really stay in the power band and just put it in the gear you want and always sit in that power band whenever you want it. So for that part, it's good. Like I said, very go-karty, because it's not sports car powerful, it's go-kart powerful, where you get little, you can get the little, you know, spurt of energy when you want it. But again, I would, definitely spend the money to get the spec V if you could because you're getting the six speed you're getting the better suspension you're getting more power and you actually get red seat belt seat belts if that's uh, your thing but for the most part it's still fun it's a fun daily driver it gets where you need to go it's a four-cylinder you get 30 on the highway about 31 miles per gallon on the highway which is nice so it, it's still fun it's doable and it, it's for a budget if you get one of these things used and you're you know you're a first-time car buyer or you're in high school and you've been saving money anything like that, you can really, really, you know, get these probably pretty cheap, and it's a fun car to drive, and if you need an automatic for some reason, you don't know how to drive a six-speed, or, you know, someone in your family, or you need to just get it because someone in your family doesn't know how to drive a six-speed, it, it's still a lot of fun. So, 
I would, I'm not sure if I would totally recommend this car. I would recommend the Spec V, but I'm not quite sure if I would recommend this, you know, this car in general, but it is fun. It's fun for what it is. So, um, for that, give it, I don't know, it, it's, it's good. Just leave it at that. It's a good car, nothing exceptional. Don't think you're getting, you know, WRX power or any other power. You're not getting that and you're not getting, you know, the sophistication of those cars. You're just getting basically a Sentra with a bigger engine because this does have the 2.5 liter where the regular Sentra has a two liter. And so you're getting, this is like, this was the same engine, I believe, from um, the Nissan Altima of its generation. So it just took the Nissan Altima engine and threw it in here. But for what it is, it's a fun car. So that's my take on it, guys. I hope this was informative to you, and I'll see you next time.